Wednesday, June 12, Identifying the Beast, Part 2 Rather than worshipping the beast, God's people find their greatest joy and highest delight in worshipping Him. Their obedience springs from their heart of love. They are committed to Him because they know how committed He is to them. Read Revelation 13, verse 5. Write this identifying characteristic in the space below. Revelation 13, 5. The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. Recall from Lesson 4 that God gives us a key for understanding prophetic time. One prophetic day equals one literal year, as we read previously, but let's do it again. Numbers 14, verse 34. For forty years, one year for each of the forty days you explored the land, you will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. And Ezekiel 4, verse 6. After you have finished this, lie down again, this time on your right side, and bear the sin of the people of Judah. I have assigned you forty days, a day for each year. Calculating the time period of forty-two months mentioned in Revelation 13 verse 5, using the thirty-day Hebrew month equals 1,260 prophetic days or literal years. The papacy exercised great influence from A.D. 538 to 1798 A.D. But when Berthier, Napoleon's general, took the Pope captive in A.D. 1798, the prophetic period of papal supremacy ended and Revelation's prophecy was fulfilled. Revelation 13.10 reads, He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. The blow to the papacy was extremely serious, but not fatal. According to Revelation 13.12, the deadly wound would be healed. It reads, It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf, and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. The papacy's influence, once again, would be felt worldwide. Today, world leaders welcome the pontiff as an ambassador of the Church of Rome and visit him regularly at the Vatican. In a world of unprecedented instability, the scene is being set for the Roman pontiff to become the acclaimed moral leader of the world who can bring people together. During his speech on the 6th of June 2012 to more than 15,000 people gathered in St Peter's Square in Rome, Pope Benedict XVI declared, Sunday is the day of the Lord and of men and women, a day in which everyone must be able to be free, free for the family and free for God. In defending Sunday, we defend human freedom. End of quote. And that was accessed from the internet from the Vatican on October 10, 2022. The great controversy clearly reveals where this movement will one day ultimately lead. We read from the Great Controversy, page 592, Those who honour the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of law and order, as breaking down the moral restraints of society, causing anarchy and corruption, and calling down the judgments of God upon the earth. They will be accused of disaffection toward the government. Ministers who deny the obligation of the divine law will present from the pulpit the duty of yielding obedience to the civil authorities as ordained of God. In legislative halls and courts of justice, commandment keepers will be misrepresented and condemned. End of quote. And so to finish the day, However hard it is now to see something like this happening, look at how quickly our world can change. What should these changes tell us about how quickly end-time events can come upon us? This lesson was read by Dr Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes.
And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.